Yo, sometimes you don't got time for that long grind against the CPU, or you don't want to bother with playing against users in Unlimited. That's why you got to hit up my boy Cliff2 underscore 3 on Twitter, help you with all your grinding needs. Let's go. Yo, what is good? YouTube, RCA The Great here. Another video for you guys, man. Today we are going to be talking about the process. Pink Diamond Joel Embiid. I was able to go ahead and pick him up from the auction house. I actually got lucky, got him for about 570, although he was in it for about 650 across the board. And I'm really excited to add him to my team. I think I am going to play in qualifiers tomorrow, and I think he's going to be a huge help to the squad with the pick and pop and his ability to defend and get inside for post play on the offensive end, man. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'm on the road to 15,000 subscribers. And I am still going to be putting some stuff in the Patreon this weekend. So if you're looking to get some extra tips, make sure you check that out. But man, Embiid, been waiting for a center that can do everything out there on the court and defend the paint. We're looking at an 86, I mean, an 87 three-point shot. Great post offense. If you like to post up, he's going to be crazy in the post. 94 close shot, 85 standing dunk. Doesn't handle the ball too well. I don't know why they gave him such a low ball handle. He does handle the ball well in real life. But they probably couldn't make him too good too fast. So... He's got an 82 block, 75, still 77 perimeter defense, 95 interior, rebounds the ball very well, and his biggest strength or his biggest weakness is his speed, acceleration, and lateral quickness. So if you're looking to put a shoe on MB, this is what I'm going to do. I'm waiting right now to get some diamond stuff or maybe even a gold. I'm going to be increasing his perimeter defense. I'm going to be increasing his speed and acceleration. That's three slots already. I only have two more. Then I'm going to be looking towards lateral quickness. And then my last one is more than likely going to go on his block unless I feel like putting his standing dunk on. It's going to be between block and standing dunk. Not sure which one I'm going to do yet, but those are the ones that I think are going to be having the most benefit on the court. Vertical is not going to matter too much. Everything else is not going to matter that much. I do think the lateral quickness, the block, the perimeter defense, the standing dunk, and then his speed and acceleration really do need some help on this card. When we go ahead and look at his badges, he did come with some Hall of Fame badges. With him already, I added one to him. So he comes with back down punisher, dream shake, master, post spin technician. I added post playmaker to him just because I had it um, in my collection. I think it'd be very beneficial on this card. If you want to add badges to Joel Embiid, I'm really going to be looking to put these ones on. I already put some on, but there's one more left. We got chase down artists. Comeback Kid can be switched out for blinders if you want to shoot blinder shot, but I like Comeback Kid just in case I'm trailing the game. Definitely quick first step. You have to throw it on. I'm waiting to get the gold one because it costs too much in the auction house right now. I like Guard Up just in case nobody, somebody doesn't jump or they have a smaller defender on me, so Guard Up, I'm going to be placing on him or I did place on him. And the last one is Fast Twitch. But Fast Twitch right now costs way too much in the auction house for a bronze, so I'm waiting to get that. And that's what I'm going to be adding. If I find any Hall of Fame badges for Joel Embiid, I might throw them on them. Something like a Claymore, Catch and Shoot, Rebound Chaser, or Brick Wall. I will definitely be throwing those on Joel Embiid because I think he's going to be my center for a while. So, right now he is playing my backup center position just because I have my starting lineup already pretty set. Um, and he's going to come in with Giannis. That way I can have some good defense out there. And he can play the pick and pop or he can just uh, stand in the corner or stand in the wing if I'm running some kind of pick and roll with Giannis on the court. But you guys do know I run plays, so I can switch that up anytime I need to. So I think my offense and my lineup is pretty balanced right now. I am looking to get another shooting guard soon. Let's jump into freestyle real quick, show you Joel Embiid's shot, and then get into some games and see how he's going to help my team out. Obviously, we are going to be running play, so he's going to be running off a lot of stuff. I'm going to be running pick and pop with him. Him, Iverson, we got Jason Tatum, J.R. Smith, Carmelo Anthony running off those screens. you got to be able to step up to be able to stop us. Let's go. Get into freestyle. Let's see how Joel Embiid um, shoots the ball. He has to be able to shoot to be effective in this game. Well, look at the hot zones. He has hot zones pretty much everywhere besides this center three-point shot. So you might not want to take a, a lot of shots from there. But his release, I have my release timing on early. Remember that. His release is actually really fast. Like, he shoots the ball quick. It's like it's, it's kind of like Carmelo Anthony's release. As soon as you kind of like, well, that was a little too quick. As soon as you tap it, it's like ready to go. So he does have a really nice release off the pick and pop. You don't have to wind up his shot too much. And you should be able to hit at a pretty good clip. But... It is kind of difficult to time because when you're looking at his elbow, his elbow flicks up really quick. So you have to really be able to time. It's kind of like you're just tapping the button for real. Um, if you shoot with Carmelo Anthony and you shoot well with him, you should be able to shoot well with Joel Embiid. 
Obviously, his post game inside is going to be immaculate. He's going to be able to do a lot of different post spins, get you into the lane, spin backs, get inside, and abuse any smaller matchup that's on him. If you like to shoot fadeaways, he does have a nice post fade as well. So you're going to be able to hit those. And you can green these kind of shots easier this year with this game. So I'm going to be able to like using him. Sorry, we just had a car go by the house. I'm going to be able to like using him in any different situation on the court. He also has a nice spin jump shot that you can also hit. So if you know how to mix it up in this game, Joel B is going to be beautiful for you. Don't just fall into the standing shooting. Make sure you're going to be using him in the post, using him on step backs, using him how he plays in real life because that's going to open him up the most for points out there. You want to be able to have him just like he is in real life, unstoppable, drawing double teams so that you can kick it out to your shooters out there. And on the offensive end, he's going to be able to stop pretty much any center and he can defend the, the, um, the perimeter pretty well as well. So let's hop into some clutch time and then possibly an unlimited game and then just talk about how the weekend's going to go and what you guys should be looking to pay for Joel Embiid. If you're not buying him this weekend, he's probably going to go down in price. Think about qualifiers tomorrow. People are going to be paying higher prices for him right now. So if you're waiting to get this card, you can wait a little bit and you should be able to get him a little bit cheaper than he is now. He is one of the best centers in the game right now, so don't look to get him for too cheap. But he is definitely going to go down after this weekend. My current lineup, I had Will Chamberlain in, but it's going to be nice to throw my boy Joel in the team. And I'm just going to be running with a bunch of shooters out there along with Joel Embiid. Now, I could put somebody else out there for defensive purposes, but I do like to be able to shoot all across the board in clutch time. And maybe this Hall of Fame badge pack that we get from here, be able to throw on Joel or Jason Tatum to sell later on in the year. Or maybe tonight, you know, if, he, if I get something real nice, I'll sell him for extra MT and buy me another base Joel Embiid. Sir, and we got a good matchup. Derrick Rose, Alex English, Scottie Pippen, Sean Kemp, and Kevin McHale. Now, I do not think Kevin McHale or Sean Kemp can defend Joel Embiid inside. So it's going to be easy pickings inside. But let's see how this pick and pop is looking with this dude, man. We got to see how the pick and pop is doing. And I did not increase his speed yet. So I want to see how he does on the pick and roll defense without the increase of speed. And as you can see there, he plays great defense. This is a little half court press out here. Iverson on the ball. That's great defense. Good, Joel. Yes, sir, Joel, good defense board up. I wish my Joel had rebound chaser. I do wish that, but I, I might try to get one with rebound chaser later on. Let's hit Jarrett Smith out there. Trying to get the ball to Joel. Let's see if he can hit a nice little post fade on Scott Pippen real quick. Stash. Nope. Yeah, he struggles to get up the court. He he really struggles to get up the court. That 71 speed, you need to boost that to 75 for him to be super effective out there. Because I did not, I don't think I put break starter on him, but he should be good without it. Oh, good move. Fade away. Let's go. If they want, if they want to play off you like that, Joel's gonna hit that fadeaway. That's what I'm telling you guys. You don't have to wait to just shoot standing shots. If you learn how to shoot the fadeaways and stuff with these players, you're gonna be able to hit way more shots than normal. Um, just waiting for them to be able to hit standing shots. Oh yeah, you shot you. Oh, he stepped up on that. Let me see. Let me see pick and pop, man. I could have hit Tatum right there for a three, but we're gonna we're gonna go with the Joel show. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Joel. The pick and poppers are looking good. That's three. That's fine. Hands up. Get up. Good boy, Joel. Run it. Oh, back to him. Back to him in the middle. Yes. Let's go. Seven points for Joel, two rebounds. I like to see that. Three for four, 75%. You know he's coming that way. Pour it up, Joel. Ah, let's go. I like the rebounds, baby. Uh. Can Joel hit this over Steph? Can Joel hit this over? Nope. I released that too late, too. I think he would have hit it if I didn't release it late. That's a steal. Great defense. I was saying, oh, how did he run through me? Layup. Joel. Joel with the step back. Sabonis is too slow. Uh, Joel getting up. If I had rebound chase on this Joel, he would. I don't think he would miss a rebound. Oh, yeah, hit him. Back to Joel. Don't sag off of my Joel. Don't sag off of my Joel. Let's go. Like he, he can score everywhere. That's what I like about cards like this. Like, he can defend everywhere and he can score everywhere. There's literally nowhere on the court that you don't want him to be. So, like, if he's on the wing, he can score. If he's in the post, he can score. If he's cut into the basket, he can score. If he's, you know, has to do a post move, he can score. I love playing with centers like this because 
if you know all the, the buttons, if you know how to do everything, if you know all the controls to the game and all the weapons that are available to you on offense, there's literally no way your opponent can stop you. And that's kind of how I used Jokic last year and, and Sabonis because depending on how they played me, I was going to score regardless. Yes, sir. That's why we need fast twitch. So that's without fast twitch. He took very long to go up with the bat with the ball this game, but that's me. He gave me a different animation that time. That's why I like Joel too, because they're gonna come out to close out. They're gonna blow by him, and then you get that spin animation. If you if you understand how to time his spin shot, you should be able to get that easily. Every wow, that's a good shot right there. Just like he just did. Ugh. And I pass it to the wrong person. Joel for four, and he, oh, it's only a three. They gave me it though, let's go. So as you can see, like the closeout on Joel and B, they have to close out on him. So you're gonna be able to get a lot of blow by that quick first step on gold or Hall of Fame will turn him up because then you'll be able to get into the paint way easier with this card. And in the post, his drop stepper and his post moves are going to be easy to get to go um, up against anybody that's way smaller than him. Now, somebody like Wilt is probably gonna be able to stop him, but definitely not Sean Kemp. All right, man, so if you had a chance, like I said, go and pick yourself up a Joel Embiid, but a couple key points. Make sure you increase his speed. He needs to get fast twitch so that he can get go up quicker under the basket, and he has to have a little bit higher perimeter defense, just in my opinion overall. But solid card, if you learn his shot, he's going to be very effective inside and out, and if you use all the moves available to you, they should not be able to stop Joel Embiid on the offensive end. He should be getting the ball pretty much every single play especially if he has a weak defender on him so without further ado man i'm done with the video hope you guys enjoyed it go pick yourself up a process man trust the process let's get it peace